you realize then this is suicide. And that's what shook me up. One of the things about alcoholism addiction is you lose hope. No matter how far an addict falls, there is hope for a comeback. And few people have climbed as high, fallen as far, and climbed back again than Vin Baker. Now, the Bucks selected Baker with the eighth pick of the 1993 draft. He played 13 seasons in the NBA, a four-time All-Star and Olympic gold medalist for Team USA at the 2000 Sydney Games. But he struggled with drugs and alcohol almost that entire time, that addiction finally ending his career. But Vin Baker is now celebrating 10 years of sobriety, and he's back in the NBA as an assistant coach for the Bucks. Uh, for folks who are not familiar with your story, kind of walk us through how you got to where you are right now. So yeah, I, I had a, a rather epic and, and well-documented uh, fall from grace. You know, I started off, had an amazing first five years of my NBA career, and then basically was addicted to alcohol. You know, started off just casually drinking like most people do and before i knew it within like a year's time of you know drinking on the weekends and being like a partying drinker it came to a point where i actually needed the alcohol to function um stayed into in my alcoholism for years i mean it literally wiped out my career um took away all my talents and then all, all the off the court stuff that happened to me as far as spiritually physically financially you know, one day I just woke up and, and said, I got to make a change. You know, 10, 10 years ago, April 17th, uh, I decided to go in, check myself in to get sober. And here I am 10 years later um, with 10 years of sobriety. And was there a certain incident that uh, I guess you get, guess pushed you to the point where you said, I have to get help? Yeah, you know, it was it was multiple times. I think first it was professionally like. Uh, that was my first when I was with the Boston Celtics, and uh, they basically said, you know, you got to get help. We realize that you have an issue and have a problem. The first time I went was obviously I was embarrassed and and uh, in denial. Uh, this isn't me. Um, I think more embarrassed. I knew I was an alcoholic, but I think I was more embarrassed being a professional athlete. I think the the the, the embarrassment was what made me my first three or four times it kept me from getting the help I really needed and, and ultimately kept me from my sobriety um, that I'm enjoying now. 10 years went from saving your career to saving your life, it sounds like. 100%, like it, when, when you, it's a whole different train of thought. Like I, I wanted to like save my reputation. I wanted to save my career. I wanted to salvage my money. I wanted to salvage this. And then it just came to a point where um, my life was on the line, like literally was on the line. And so, uh, it was just like my animal instincts, my survive, it kicked into survival mode. Like I got to just live. And the only way I'm going to live is to put the bottle down and, and really give sobriety a real shot. I did. Uh, and my life changed drastically uh, by simply abstaining from alcohol. And, and one of the things I know you're doing now, you have a, a, uh, the Bouncing Back Foundation. Tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, me and my good friend R.J. Bunch and Steve Garros, uh, David Goldberg, and we started a foundation about five years ago that we want to help get back to the community. And I want to use my platform and my testimony to save lives. And so uh, we started the Bouncing Back Foundation and to help people in recovery, to bring hope to people who are struggling with addiction. Um, we're getting ready to launch a few um, uh, recovery centers in the Midwest, in Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia, here in Milwaukee. As you probably well know, COVID-19 has not just been about COVID-19. It's opened up a whole uh, different can of worms on things that have been going on in people's lives forever. People have resorted back to you know, addiction. Opioid crisis is, is, is at an all-time high, and certainly alcoholism. So I want to play my small part and see how many people I can help and extend my platform, extend my hope and my testimony to those people who have lost hope. And finally, Vin, I'll ask you, what is Vin Baker's legacy? So I, I want my legacy to be, um, and I believe I'm working on it daily now, is to be someone who in life was given a, an extraordinary opportunity, but life, life happens. And for me, it was alcoholism. And so I want to show people uh, in the world of recovery that you can overcome, you can beat it. Um, you can live life on life on life's terms, even more so than being an all-star, being a, a, an NBA coach and being an Olympian. I wanna be able to show people 
how I was able to go in this dark world of addiction, but by the grace of God, by faith and by trust and by, you know, just believing in myself, I, I overcame addiction. And so I want to be able to provide that hope. That's what I want my legacy to be. Remember, after this show, you're going to have the chance to ask questions to some of our experts. You'll want to go to the WISN 12 News Facebook page at the top of the hour. There are also people willing to help you or a loved one find the resources they may need. Hannah Lepper is the Alliance for Wisconsin Youth Coordinator for Community Advocates Public Policy Institute. So Hannah, when and if you do have conversations with parents who uh, perhaps have addiction in, in someone that, that is addicted in their life or know someone of that, what is the biggest roadblock for them in terms of seeking help? Uh, I think um, for some people they have to be ready to receive that process and go through um, that change and you can't force anybody to to be ready to go and change their life. They have to want that change for themselves. Um, so I think they just really have to find that um, within themselves. Thanks so much, Hannah. And we also have a list of resources right now on WISN.com slash opioids. You can also scan the QR code on your screen. Along with those resources on the page, we are also adding the segments of this special where you can watch again and share them with someone who may need it. It has never been easy for grown-ups to connect with kids. Meet a high school student who's already making it his life's mission to keep others from getting hooked. This is what every family needs to know.